two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Good morning, everyone. Morning. 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 Uh, morning. Thanks, you Nathan. <laughs> um, welcome to Real Life Christian Church this morning. Special welcome to you if this might be one of your first times joining with us. Um, and also welcome to those of you who are joining with us online. Um, so I think that we're pretty lucky that with all the restrictions and changes and whatnot, we're still able to gather together yeah. um, in one place, which is pretty exciting. That's something that I personally now never take for granted. Um, so... As we worship this morning, I encourage you to just lift your voices to our God because we get to we get a chance this morning to worship our God who he breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger than anything we could ever imagine. So I'd invite we, I'd invite you to join with us, stand, raise, raise your hands if you feel comfortable and just worship our God. So join with us as we sing.
Sing it out, church. Let's sing out Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Lord, we do make that our prayer that heal our hearts and make it clean. Mm. Open up our eyes to the things unseen. Show us how to love like you. Lord, show us how to love like you. You are the ultimate role model for what love is. So much so that you died on the cross. Painful death for us. So Lord, we make that our prayer today. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite Lisa up. She's going to um, lead us in communion this yep. morning. I am. Am I on? I am. Good morning, church. Can I just check before we start? Everyone's communioned up. Good eye. All right. I wanted to read from you, for, to you, just from uh, one John chapter one. Some verses. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared and we have seen it and testified to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to you to make our joy complete. And this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. This meal that we share together is an incredible remembrance of a work done on the cross, the past. But it's also a celebration of the present. And it's an affirmation and proclamation of the future. It's an unveiling of God that we saw in the past through the cross... We recognise as we eat and drink that we live by grace alone, by a gift that God has done for us in his coming. A past action that's finished, that all is given and that God has purposed for us. But in that we proclaim now, here with us together as one spirit, God is with us. So we share, well, symbolically in one loaf and one cup because we are one people. So right now, here as we gather together, we celebrate that the life of Christ is wanting to nurture 
and heal and renew us as a people. So we give thanks for that present reality. And we can sit, and as we receive these elements, receive spiritually what God is wanting to do for us. And of course, the proclamation of the future, as Revelation says, where death shall have no more, neither shall there be mourning or crying or pain, for the former things have passed away. So in this meal, we also celebrate the taste of what we have, but what is going to be full the life and the light of love of Jesus fully revealed to us. So we're going to celebrate together this meal. It's imperishable, undefiled and unfading life. Life of Christ given to us on the cross, present to heal and renew us now and is taking us into a future together for his purpose. So let's pray. Father, thank you for the wonder and amazing purpose you have to bring life. And the way in which you've unveiled that life through your son Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the way in which you have released that life and love and light into this world through your spirit. Lord, just as you take us as very ordinary instruments and anoint us, take these ordinary juice and wine, (laughs) juice and bread, and make them be for us afresh the body and blood of Christ. Pour out your spirit upon us. Let us receive afresh the amazing grace. Thank you, Father, for this gift and for the wonder that it's you that is giving it. You are El Shaddai and you are building us as living stones into your temple and we are in awe of that. Would you cleanse us afresh even as we eat and drink this day? In Jesus' name, amen. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take Eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as, and as drink, you drink it in remembrance of me. So let's take our first layer. And as we peel off, we remember that it's Jesus who unveiled the life of God for us. And he is the bread of life. May we take and share in the body of Christ. As we take off our second layer... He unveiled the love of God fully on the cross and the grace that is now available to us every day to receive. The blood of Christ, a cup in the sharing of his blood. Father, we thank you that it is you who is nourishing and sustaining us. It's you who send us out together to proclaim the wonders of your goodness and your grace, your love, your life and your light that you continue to permeate through us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for that, Lisa. Good morning, guys. How's everyone going today? And good morning, those online. We'd love to see you. Uh, I've got a quick fact for you. Did you know that the gazelle can jump higher than the average house? This is due to their very strong hind legs and the fact that the average house can jump. So, yeah, really great fact. You want another one? Did you know that most frogs do not have their forklift license? Yeah. <clears throat> 
I know, tough crowd. <laughs> no, guys, it's awesome to see you all this morning, especially with all the new things going on with COVID restrictions. It's really great to see you guys and all those online. Um, for your parents out here with little ones, you, there is a parent retreat just through the Flynn room, through that foyer there. If you would like to sit with your choir ones or do anything you need to do, don't, you will still not miss out on the service. There is a big, nice screen there for you guys to watch. Um, don't forget, afterwards, after the service, we will have tea and coffee for you guys just out there. Now, bear in mind, you will probably still have to wear masks unless you're seated uh, to consume tea and coffee. Um, and also, if you're new, there is a welcome studio just through that foyer out there as well. We would love to get to know you guys and get to know more about you and what you, what you guys want to this week. Um, now, if you're online, you will have a little button that says the notes tab. So click on that to find out more about what's going on in the life of the church. Uh, in-house, that's me, I am your notes tab. Hi, I will tell you everything right now. Um, so if you would like to know more, we have an awesome church email that goes out weekly, so subscribe to that. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, have a look on that as well. And if you have Instagram and things like that, there are things that get posted there as well. Um, and then the next thing we have going on is the Global Leadership Summit. Yeah, three people are excited. Woo! No, guys, it's a global leadership show. It's really, really awesome. Um, if you haven't done it before, you don't know much about it, it is where a whole bunch, we get together for a whole day where a whole bunch of speakers come out and they share wisdom, they share knowledge, insight to an aspect of your life maybe you're not aware of. Um, you might be thinking, oh, I'm just an average Joe Blow. I don't do much. I'm not leading in something. You are a leader in many things that you're not aware of. And I cannot recommend... Uh, coming to this. Um, I thought, oh, I'm just, you know, in young adults, I don't do much outside of that in leading. I've learned things that I can take to my workplace, to my university, to my marriage. All these things you can learn if you guys come along. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, you can register via online with the Global Leadership Network Australia website and just select RLCC as your host site. The early bird price of $74 is still there. It will end this Wednesday. So do lock it in if you are really keen. If you, know, if you have any questions about it, feel free to talk to one of us or people at the front. They'll happily answer your questions. And yeah, and the next thing we have as well is Alpha, which is really, really awesome. Now, it will be running on Wednesday nights and Wednesday mornings starting out on the 13th of October, which is next week. Yep, it's next week. Oh, good math. Uh, it's next week. So it runs for eight weeks. Guys, Alpha is really, really, really cool. I got to do it once, way, way back when, and I have met lifelong friends um, going through that course. I've asked serious questions. We've shared meals together. We've built relationship. And it's one of the things we're called to do. And I think it's really, really powerful. Um, so yeah, I really encourage you guys, if you're keen and want to do one of the two options, check in with one of us. We'll happily help you organize how to get there, what to do, and how to get that going. So we're just going to take two minutes now to check in. So those of you online, you'll be a little connect card come up for you on the screen. Tap that, and you can just fill out your details, pay any prayer requests. That's all confidential. Those in-house, you will have a QR code, never mind. Um, you will have uh, an option to do that on the app as well, or you can uh, put a note into the letterbox. And if you want to give, you can give electronically, or if you wanted to do cash, we'd have those letterboxes again that you can put them into. I'll give that time to you now.
Thank you guys for doing that. Well, let's spend some time in prayer. Dear God, I just want to thank you that with all the things going on around with COVID and the new restrictions and the new cases, that we can still come together face to face in your presence. Now, this is just a building, but we are grateful that we can share community like this. So, we God, we pray for those that can't do this, that are prohibited or restricted in some way where they can't connect, where they can't be in relationship. God, we just lift them up to you right now. May your peace and love wash over them. And God, we continue to pray over the COVID-19 pandemic that you would give the leaders of our government wisdom, mercy and knowledge to lead well, to lead with safety in mind for the whole community in mind, God. Mm. God, I just want to lift up for all the teachers and students going back to school in their last term. I thank you. We thank you for the holidays. We thank you for the rest that they've had. We thank you for the recharge, the renewal, the friendships that they've built, they can invest in. So God, as teachers go back this, sem- this final term, give them that last burst of energy, the last burst of just that, that fire to finish the year strong, to you know, build those relations up even further, God. Mm. And if you're comfortable doing this, um, if you are a student at school or at uni, at uni um, if you're comfortable, maybe you'd like to just raise your hand up. If you're studying in some way, shape or form, TAFE, university, at school, if you want to lift your hand up, I would, just, would love to pray for you right now. Mm. So God, you see these hands up. And if you're online, your hands are up. God, you can see these people, these students, they're learning, God. For those at school right now, this is their last term of the year. They're going to a new transition. So, God, we just want to lift them up to you. For those at university or TAFE, they're probably coming into the, the hairy end of their semester. God, we just want to remind them and lift them up that what they're doing, the part they're on, is chosen by you. So, God, give them the fire to finish that strong. Give them the strength to keep going. And for the students that are in grade 12 that are finishing high school, God, we just want to lift you up right now, God. We just want to play a blessing over you that are finishing grade 12. This is your last term. I bet there's so much anxiety, doubt, frustration, a world of emotions in them, God, that they don't know what to do. Maybe they're worried what the next season looks like. Maybe they're afraid of those getting those right grades, the results that they need. God, just remind them that their results do not define who they are. What they achieve academically does not define who they are. You define who they are, and they are loved. They're extraordinary, God. You've made them disciples. You've made them amazing thinkers, innovators. You've made them strong, God. So, God, just remind them, wash over them with your peace and your mercy and your kindness and your love. Hold them in your arms, God, and remind them that they are loved. As we get back into worship, we're going to be praising you, God. All these things that we've prayed about, about Alpha, that's going to happen next week, and Global Leadership Summit that's coming up. All of these things, they're programs, they're things that just happen in our day. But none of them succeed without you, God. None of them have no fruit when you're not involved. So God, everything that we've prayed about today, everything that's going to be happening in this community, in our own lives, we lift them up to you right now, God. We thank you for what you're going to do. We're expectant. And we're hungry for more, God. 
Mm. We ask this in your mighty name. Amen. Why don't we stand for worship?
Christ is my reward. Christ is my reward. And all of my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world can ever satisfy.
Lord, we make that our prayer today. And we declare that you are enough. You are more than enough for us. And Lord, we just pray that as we prepare our hearts and as you prepare our hearts um, for the word that Dan is going to speak to us today, Lord, that our hearts would be open. Open to hearing what it is you have to say and open to changing and being moulded and moved and um, just made into um, who you want us to be, God. Thank you that you are enough. We thank you that you are enough over every single circumstance, over every single thing in our lives. We know, Lord, that you are enough. We we love you, Lord. And we pray these these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to invite Dan to come forward. He's going to share the word with us this morning. Awesome. Can we give Megan and Nathan a hand? Uh, And... At this stage, I'd also like to release the kids out to the program. So if you're part of that, you can head on out. That'd be great. While they're heading out, um, Johan, uh, why don't cannibals eat clowns? Because they taste funny. <laughs> no, actually, um, I saw my grandma fiddling with her ear one day, and I was like, oh, hey, grandma, what's, what's up? She's like, oh, I just got this new hearing aid. It's so good. Like, it's, I love it. I said, oh, what kind is it? And she said, oh, about 12.30. <laughs> that one made me laugh. Real bad. Um, well, good morning, everybody. My name is Dan, if you don't know me. And uh, I am... Actually, this is the first time I, I'm kind of up here since the news that uh, has been announced that next year I'm going to be the Youth and Young and Olds Pastor. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I look out, everybody. Going to see a bit more of me, leaving the classroom behind. All those students are like, "Yay!" Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I, I'm going to miss a lot of things about teaching, uh, particularly teaching English. I actually love teaching English. It's it's so much fun, and I thought today that I could run you guys through a few different activities that I do in my English class. So um, today I need a bit of uh, engagement um, with you all. So this is not going to be um, a time for you to just sit back and take it easy and like let it all wash over you. You're going to be part of this, this message. Is that cool? All right, awesome. So uh, we're going to start with a little game um, that everybody's very familiar with. And to do this, um, all I need to say is, Simon says, stand up. <laughs> Simon says, put your hands on your head. <clears throat> Simon says, Touch your toes. <laughs> Bit of a struggle. Okay, Simon says hands on shoulders and hands on heads. Oh, I got a whole bunch of people. If I just got you, you can sit down. All right, now hands on heads. Oh, and I just got a few more people. All right, all right, all right. Simon says hands on heads. Simon says hands by his side. Now turn around. Oh, oh, you're good. All right, Simon says turn around. Simon says hop on one leg. Simon says, off on the other leg. Now on the other leg. Oh, oh, if I got you, then sit down. All right, Simon says, stand up straight. Simon says, do a little wiggle. All right, you can sit down. No, no, okay. Simon says, sit down. (laughs) All right, that's the end of the game. Okay, well done if you made it to the end. Great job. Um, So each each of those actions, those instructions, sit, stand, kneel, touch, put, whatever. They're all verbs, right? Verbs are doing words. You guys are ready to pass English, at least in grade two. Awesome. So um, now another part of speech that I teach uh, my students is um, called prepositions. Now, I know Eliana knows what they are. Um, Prepositions are very simple. They show position. And um, to demonstrate, uh, actually, Eliana, can I get you to do me a favor? Um, what I can see you sitting so lovely on your chair right now. 
Uh, I'm just going to change one of the words in that sentence. Why don't you sit, instead of on the chair, why don't you sit under the chair? <laughs> well done, okay. And uh, maybe now sit beside the chair. Yeah, yep, that's fine. Can you sit above the chair? Not really, hey. All right, well, just be grateful that I, I didn't ask you all to sit on your neighbor, or <laughs> you're, you're doing well to sit beside your neighbor right now. So prepositions show position. They're very important. Um, everyone say that after me. Prepositions show position. Prepositions. Great. All right, you're all ready for the exam. So uh, I'm just joking. There's not an exam today. It's tomorrow. Uh, no. But keep those verbs, prepositions, put them in your back pocket. We'll need them for later, okay? Um, so, what we are going to be doing today is actually looking at uh, discipleship um, and how that's part of God's mission for us. And the reason why I started with a, a bit of a callback to teaching is because I think discipleship and teaching are very closely related to each other. Um, and my hope today is to share with you some of the wisdom that I've learned about discipleship from my experience with teaching. Uh, I hope to demystify some of what it means to be a disciple and how we can disciple others, and to also sketch out a, a brief picture, a really simple picture that you can apply onto your life today. Um, so maybe you're here today and you see yourself as someone in need of discipleship. Great. Hopefully I can help you out with what to look for. Or maybe you're here today and you are someone who wants to disciple others. Well, hopefully I can give you some wisdom there as well. Um, wherever you're at, there is something that you can do right now to take the next step in your discipleship adventure. What is a disciple? For me, the image that comes to mind uh, is like Jesus with his 12 disciples, uh, or maybe for you it's like some guru perched on a mountaintop with the people around him, his disciples. Maybe you have negative connotations with the word disciple. It's too close to the word discipline, and that ugh, is, is not a very pleasant word for you. Um, but we, we do know that discipleship is important in Scripture. Our passage today is Matthew 28, verses 20, uh, 18 to 20. And if you have your Bible with you, uh, I'll give you a moment to turn there, and we'll read it together. Jesus says, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And as he's speaking this, it's at the very end of the book of Matthew, the story of Jesus' life. He has died on the cross, he's been risen again, and he's giving his disciples his last uh, instructions before he ascends into heaven. So these are like, Jesus' last words, they're really important. I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth, he says. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus' last words to his disciples is to go and make more. Go and make more. Discipleship is very important to Jesus. And if we claim to be Jesus' disciples, then we'd, be be then we'd better be doing the same. But how do you know if you are a disciple or if you're discipling others? I think perhaps a helpful place to start um, is just to look at the word disciple, meaning one who learns from. One who learns from. And that's why teaching is so closely related to it. Um, but as we'll see, teaching has some of its own complications. And uh, teaching has had to change a little bit because I don't know if anybody... Well, okay, there's a, there's a few different generations present here this morning, which is great. One of the cool things about being part of real life. But if you graduated high school uh, before, say, the year 2000, 2005... 
um, chances are that you would have experienced education as content delivery. Education as information. Like, this is what you need to know. There you go. Just remember this. Um, and a lot of assessment back in the day was just about how well you could actually memorize and then repeat information that you learned. Obviously, that's a problem today because we have information everywhere. And a lot of the information that we've learned is now either irrelevant or wrong, just plain wrong. Um, we have all the information that we need just within arm's reach. There's no need for us to remember it. Newton's laws, I'll just Google them. Uh, how to make the best muffin in the world, I'll just YouTube a tutorial. Um, you know, and I have done that. <laughs> uh, so what's, what's more important? Is it the information? No. Uh, competency or character? Information is everywhere. But if I only teach my students what they need to know, they may pass the test, but they may not be ready for life. They may not be able to apply the information wisely in different circumstances. Sure, you may turn into an expert programmer, uh, but we failed if you create AI that gets people addicted and um, less dehumanizing them. Sure, you may turn into an expert doctor, but we've failed if you agree to take the life of the unborn on a whim. You may pass the test at school or uni, but you may not be living in a way that brings flourishing to the world. So good teaching doesn't actually ask, what do I want my students to know? It asks the question, who do I want my students to become? And it works towards that aim. In simpler terms, teaching is not about information. It's about formation. Not about information, but formation. And your life is the real test. What kind of person are you turning into day by day? Um, and it's the same test for discipleship. Sometimes I feel we treat discipleship like old school teaching, as though, um, you know, here's what's on the test, uh, you need to know this, repeat after me, this, 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 amen, great, you know, I'll sign your name off, uh, hallelujah, you're saved. That's not discipleship. Um, it, it's like the important thing sometimes seems to be just getting people to that point of, uh, you know, passing the test, saying the right thing, praying the prayer. Um, Nick said to me yesterday that, it's like giving someone their, their learner's license and then just sending them off on the road. <laughs> you know, that's not a great start. Um, discipleship is all about the person that you're becoming. It's a journey towards God. And in Genesis 1, 26, God makes humans in his image. We are all like angled mirrors reflecting Yahweh's character into the world and the world's goodness back to Yahweh. And we're going to come back to that image a little later. Now, what sin does is sin shatters that mirror. So there's pieces of it still there, but it's broken, distorted. It's not the same as what it once was. But by following Jesus, our mirror is slowly restored, and we can ourselves lead others towards that restoration. So the question is, how are we going to do this? How do we do this? How do we disciple well, you're a clever audience. We've already started learning the basics. Reach into that back pocket and pull out that verb. All right? We're going to use one verb and two prepositions today um, as our tool for how to effectively disciple. Um, so this is your action word, right? This is a, a, if you've got gestures and postures, this is our gesture, a way of acting in the world. And the way that we act in the world is through the verb include. That's it, include. Um, inclusion is the gesture of discipleship. So uh, I need a little bit of, um, can, you, can you all show me what's an action that shows inclusion? How would you, how would you show inclusion with a, with a gesture? 
<laughs> I see a handshake over there. I see a hug going on over there. Anything else? Anything? Yeah, hands raised. Great. Yep, like arms out wide. Good. Yeah, what about like a come on, you know, bring it, bring it in. Yep, anything like that. That's a, that's a gesture of inclusion. Cool. So here's a little trick about inclusion, and this is... It shows you some of the power of language, right? Imagine for a moment you're with some friends and you want to play a game of uh, basketball, soccer, whatever, tennis. Um, and you're with your friends, and then on the other side of the court or the field is somebody on their own who's you know, kicking a soccer ball around or shooting some hoops. How are you going to get them to join? What do you, what do you say to get them to join? There's a few different ways that you could do it. Um, if you said something like, would you like to join? Uh, statistically, they're going to say no, uh, unless they're super extroverted. But to be a solo person confronted with a group of people, um, if you just offer them an invitation, they'll say no. But if, however, you say something like, hey, join us, we need an extra player, you can be on my team, then the chances are much more likely that they're going to join in. And you notice what I did there. Uh, I didn't actually offer an invitation. There was no question. It was like, you're in. You're included already before you've even accepted the invitation. Um, so as, as a, an example, you know, at the start, when we played this game of Simon Says, uh, you all stood up and played a game made for little children um, just because, you know, you, I included you in it. Um, there was no, would you like to play? It was like, yeah, this is what we're doing, you're, and you're in it. Come and join. Be part of it. So how can this apply to discipleship? Well, as disciples of Jesus, we know that real life and joy is found in following Christ. And why not include other people rather than just invite them. Um, hey, come along to Life Group. Uh, I know the group would really love and value the opinion that you have on some of the things that we talk about. Uh, you don't have to believe before you belong. Or, hey, I want to become more consistent reading my Bible. Um, why don't you read a chapter with me this week? Uh, let's do that together. Include others in what you're doing. It can be things that you're already doing. It doesn't have to be things that you're making up. Uh, I've been running on Saturday mornings for a couple years now. And uh, last year, Nick started running with me. Um, Luke was run came running with me. We go for about 15, 20 Ks nonstop. Um, no, we don't, actually. <laughs> uh, and then we have, we, and we have a great chat. And uh, my life's been really blessed by including these guys in what I was already doing. Um, and I learned a lot from them. So just that simple act of including someone in ha has been a real delight. So what's something that you do currently that you could include someone else in? That's the verb, include. That's our gesture of discipleship. So now we've done that. We've included someone. We're on to the two prepositions now of discipleship. So pull those out of your pocket. All right, there's two. Remember, Preposition show, position, good. Yep, someone's on track to pass, A+. Plus. Um, so now these are about, not gestures, but these are about postures, orientations towards the world and towards others. So where, where the uh, including is an action, um, the posture is just the way that you're facing. The first posture is to be for others, for others. And by for, I mean that discipleship has a direction. Uh, you are always facing some way, pointing in a direction. Um, discipleship says, I am for you. I am facing your way, and I am here to point you uh, to who you could be in Jesus. So coming back to that picture of the angled mirror, right? 
If I stand in front of you and I'm an angled mirror, I can see you there. You look great, Zach. Um, And if Zach looks at me, the point is that I should be reflecting Christ. So if Christ is, say, here, I'm facing Christ myself in my own life. Um, And as Zach looks at me, he sees the reflection of Christ. Um, But I'm also looking at Zach. So in that way, I am both for Zach and I am pointing Zach. Yeah, does that make sense? Like, thanks. (laughs) Okay. Um, You are facing both God and others, reflecting one to the other. Paul actually uses this language in in 2 Corinthians, uh, chapter 3, verse 18. I love this verse. This is what he says. We all, with unveiled faces, are looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord. And we're being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. This is from the Lord, who is the Spirit. You know, we become like what we look at. I've had the privilege of working with some incredible teachers, and uh, I was really honored to be part of a conversation with a boy who was struggling um, behaviorally, academically, and I sat in this meeting, and uh, this other teacher and I, um, we said to this fella, hey, we are, we're on your side. We are for you. We want you to be the best version of yourself that you can. And you know what? After that meeting, he flipped a switch. And he, was, he went from like C minuses to A's uh, in his grades. He, his behavior changed. Just knowing that someone actually had his back completely reoriented him. And it was so powerful to see. That's the same thing that happens with discipleship. Our posture should be for others. I am for you, not against you. What is discipleship, if not holding up a mirror of the best version of you that you can become? And that best version is, according to the Christian worldview, found most fully in life with Christ. So the word for is all about direction. And a powerful example of this directional focus is found in Philippians. And I'm going to get um, Nick, actually, to come up and, and read the passage. It's a bit of a longer passage. It's five, well, five verses, paragraph. Um, just let the words think, uh, sink into you. And I want you to uh, see if you can find where Paul does the verb inclusion and how he's facing the, the, the preposition for. Where's his direction? Not that I have already reached the goal or I'm already fully mature, but I make every effort to take hold of it because I also have taken hold, also have been taken hold of by Christ Jesus. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead. I pursue as my goal the prize promised by Jesus, promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Therefore, All who are mature should think this way. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this also to you. In any case, we should live up to whatever truth we have attained. Join us in imitating me, brothers, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. Great. Thanks, Nick. Did you hear the join us? Yeah? Join me in imitating... uh, Join in imitating me. That's the inclusion... And hopefully you got the pictures of the four, the direction that Paul is heading. My goal is to know him. As disciples of Jesus, we need to both face ourselves in, the, in his direction, and we need to point others in that direction too. Our desire is not just to include people for the sake of it, but for a purpose, for their sake. Um, right. On to the second preposition the last point. At the start of last year, I remember uh, thinking about teaching as discipleship, and all of a sudden I felt the weight of responsibility fall heavily on my shoulders. I was like, oh my goodness, this is such a significant task. Like, discipleship is, is not something that you can take lightly. 
I'm not qualified for this. How, how am I supposed to do that well? God, like, I, I don't know what, what to do, where to even begin. And, and I felt as though God said to me, Daniel, how is it that I disciple you? And that's when I realized what is our second preposition and the final point for today, that I am discipled just by being with Jesus. I am discipled through proximity to his presence. James 4.8 says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. I become more like Jesus when I am with him. The language of Genesis 1, again, tells us that we are only truly ourselves when we are with God in his presence, back in that state of Eden. And if you're not there, then that's the direction you need to point in order to become who you were meant to be. And so suddenly the burden that I felt uh, of the obligation, the responsibility of discipling, was just suddenly lifted off my shoulders. Um, I, I don't have the power to transform anybody, um, but I can be with them. And that, that's all I need to do. That's all God asks of me, is that if I'm with him, and if, if I'm with others, then he does the work in me and through me of discipleship. I imagine the posture uh, of someone being with you is like standing side to side, shoulder to shoulder, uh, or maybe someone putting your arm around them. The idea of being with is all about getting rid of agendas. It's all about relationship. Where being for others is about direction, uh, being with others is about relationship. To share life with you is to say that there are no hidden motives. I enjoy you for you. Of course, um, we do hope and pray that people come to a saving relationship with Jesus. But as I said, that's not our responsibility. Uh, it's not within our power to make that decision for them. All we can do is love unconditionally and simply be with. To demonstrate the attractiveness of the life of Jesus. And after all... Uh, that passage from Matthew that we read, after Jesus says, go and make disciples, his last words are, behold, I am with you, even to the end of the age. So there you have it. Uh, we've got a verb or a gesture, include, uh, and we've got two prepositions or postures, for, which is directional, and with, which is relational. Um, so the chances are you could pick any relationship you're in and employ one of those three words. How could you include someone in what's already going on in your life? How can you cheer them on to be the best that they can be in Christ? And surely you can make a way just to be with others. If we are serious about the call to discipleship, we should be aiming to live with others to live for others, and to include them in our discipleship journey. So um, as Megan and Nathan come back up, maybe you're here today and you don't feel like you're ready to disciple others because um, you don't know if you're one yourself. You are so, so welcome here. Join us. Join a life group. Um, attend regularly on Sundays. Keep coming back. Stick around after the service, have a chat. Uh, I'd love to meet you. There are people who, lots of people who'd love to meet you. Um, or maybe you want to be more intentional about your discipleship. Pick a relationship, any relationship in your life. Include, be with, and for. Let's together make disciples who make disciples. We're going to finish now with um, singing that song, uh, Christ is Enough and particularly the bridge, I've decided to follow Jesus. And if you have decided to follow Jesus, then um, disciple, that's what you're saying. Discipleship is important to you. Um, and if you haven't decided to follow Jesus, then now's your chance. In the quietness of your heart, you can just accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
um, and choose to follow him. And the great news is that you don't have to do that alone. You're with us. So why don't you stand and let's sing together. Let's sing I Have Decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I've seen the cross. The cross before me. Lord, we just pray that as we go out today, as we go into this world um, full of people um, ready to be disciples for you, God, we just pray that, you know, you would bring someone forward to our mind or a group of people perhaps or just, you know, work in us, stir in us all these things that, um, you know, Dan has spoken about today that we may not be afraid of discipleship, but actually we would feel prepared and encouraged and empowered because we know that you are with us through every single step of the way. So we thank you for these things, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us, everyone, this morning. It's been great to have you with us. Um, just a reminder again, you know, we will... Um, have morning tea, so some tea and coffee out there for you, but just a reminder, you will need to be seated to take those so you can take your masks off. Um, just a reminder, of course, about the GLS and Alpha, if that's something that you're interested in and you're not sure about how to get a part of that, there'll be people at the office you can speak to this morning, so if you're a bit unsure, otherwise check out our website as well. Um, but have a great week. We encourage you to connect while you're out there. There's plenty of people here who would love to have conversations with you and get to know you, so... Um, yeah, just be blessed as you go out in this week. Thanks, guys.